Welcome to another episode of Salt Air. My name is Tom Hatch, and I'm the creator of Salt. With me today from product, I have Mayhul. Mayhul has been over the development of our new security and operations product that we call Salt Stack for SecOps. Now, before we dive into the details around that product, I want to talk a little bit about why we've been creating Salt Stack for SecOps. Security operations is something which is historically a very challenging environment in which to uh, in which to function. The difference in communication between security teams and operation teams has historically and is still very difficult. At the end of the day, we want to make sure that infrastructures can be held to a high standard of security readiness. But to do that, we have to be able to automate security. We need to automate that security into the operations of the data center. And so for this reason, we have introduced our new SecOps offering to make it as easy as possible to make sure that we can have a policy-driven approach to defining exactly how an infrastructure can be made stable and secure. So Mayhul, uh, go ahead and dive into uh, what we're doing here and, uh, and then how this thing works. Thank you, Tom. Thank you all for watching this episode of uh, Salt Air. We're excited to show you Salt Stack SecOps uh, in, this, uh, in this video. What you're seeing in my, on my screen is the landing page for SaltStack SecOps. On this page, you'll see a high-level uh, summary of the, the, jo the, the jobs you've done, the assessments and remediations you've run, a high-level compliance summary to uh, standards such as 800-171, 800-53, PCI, and many more. The way we design the solution, it's very really easy for us to add support for more compliance standards going forward. And then for the last but not the least, you'll see a high-level assessment summary um, for your infrastructure. As Tom mentioned, you know, we've taken a policy-driven approach to security. Uh, and what that means is you can come into the solution uh, either as a security operations or an ID ops person and create a policy for a group of assets within your infrastructure. And once you define the policy and select the target groups, you want to apply to uh, this policy to this product to ensure those assets adhere to that policy. So let's go ahead and create a policy. Uh, when you create a policy, uh, we ask for some simple things such as name. Uh, you can select the target groups you want to apply this policy to. By default, um, only those target groups the user has access to will show up on the screen. And by the way, this entire solution is driven by the API. So all the operations that you see in this, in this video uh, can actually also be done over the API. Once you give it a name and select the target group, in the next screen, uh, we'll ask for the benchmarks that you want to apply to this policy, and this is something that this is that is something uh, new to SaltStack Enterprise. Is, is you know we're also shipping this product with a with a feed of uh, content for uh, profiles such as CIS, DISA stigs, and eventually we'll expand this content to uh, other types of content such as vulnerability, threat monitoring data, and so on and so forth. And our vision here is, you know, you're seeing, you'll see some basic operating system content here, but eventually this feed will grow in to account for many other types of applications, databases, network devices, and so on and so forth. So now that you have uh, uh, the profiles, and this is something that ships, that is created by uh, SaltStack, you can come in here and select the profiles as CIS, CentOS, right? Once you select the benchmark, you can select checks uh, that you want to bring into um, this policy. By default, all the checks that we ship with the profile are enabled, but uh, we give you the opportunity to pick and choose uh, any checks that you want uh, to customize this to your needs. So for example, 
you might want you might decide that not not all these checks are applicable or you know are not relevant to your infrastructure and maybe you just care about uh, the ssh uh, related settings uh, you can search for those uh, settings within the policy uh, you can enable and disable things that you uh, really care about and then you have your own custom policy based on something that is an internationally recognized standard from CIS or it is a state. And for all the controls or all the checks that we ship with South Stack SecOps, we also provide the metadata to go along with it. So that when the security team hands off these reports to, uh, to your operations team, they have context around why something is more important or not. The other thing we do here is we also tag in compliance references um, that are applicable to one or more controls so that you just because you satisfy or you know once you run the assessment we also we can also tell you uh, compliance with other standards uh, because of doing assessments and remediations across these controls and then finally we expose the salt state file that we'll use to for assessments and uh, and remediations. We want to be very transparent in this process. So we want to provide you with the you know when you're creating your policy, you can select the checks that you want. You know, give you the information about why they're important, and then finally expose you know the salt state file content will will run to make it happen. Once you select the checks that you want to. Uh, uh, bring into this policy. We also offer you a mechanism to configure the variables um, uh, within the policy. By default, but, uh, you know the variables will have some default uh, values. But you you can, if you want, decide to make it more stricter or lax, uh, depending on your uh, organization's uh, policy. So, for example, you can make this. 450 or you can make this as two and then salt stack will take those into account and during runtime and apply those um, variables and then finally you can decide to run this policy on demand or on a schedule when you run when you run a policy when you save the policy the policy so shows, shows up on the landing page you know this is the policy we just created and everything comes back as unknown because we haven't run an assessment or uh, remediation. So before uh, airing this episode, I ran some scans uh, with the solution, uh, and something like this will come back when you run and um, uh, when you run an assessment. So, for example, you look what you're looking at here is you know a checks level view or a controls level view uh, for for the policy, and when you, when you run an assessment, what we do behind the scenes is that we run this with test is equal to true mode in SALT. <clears throat> so what that means is we don't make any changes to the system uh, when you run an assessment. And we provide you, when, you, when we finish the assessment, we also provide you with uh, uh, details about why something is compliant or not compliant so that you, know, you can review this and you can remediate this as you, as you see fit. So, uh, so like I said, you can look at this data from two perspectives. Uh, one is the checks level view. So these controls are compliant or not compliant across these number of uh, assets or minions. You can also look at the same data from a minions perspective. For example, this minion is compliant or not compliant with these number of uh, controls. Now, once you have this level of uh, visibility, what you can start to do from here on is you can now uh, remediate. You can remediate uh, one control um, uh, or one minion or all controls for one or more minions and then hit remediate. Or you could do the same thing from uh, a checks level view. So you could remediate all minions for one one or more, uh, oh, not this one, <coughs> uh, one or more uh, checks and then you can go ahead. And then finally, you can also uh, file for exemptions. You know, one of the things, you know, we did a lot of product research before we did, you know, we started building out the solution. And one of the feedbacks from our customer was, you know, we, we know we need to be compliant, but there is always going to be a situation where we need to file 
uh, for an exemption. And the exemption could be because there is a business reason, there is a uh, there is a legitimate business reason to make that happen. So what you can do here is you can file for an exemption. So for example, Let's say this is an exemption approved by CIS. So again, this is an all API driven. Uh, you can query, you can do it, get exemptions from here on, and then you can review these exemptions in the um, in the exemptions tab. So once you file all your exemptions, uh, what you could do is you could hit uh, remediate all. And when you hit remediate all, it goes ahead and applies state files for all the controls that we just um, that, that we just uh, identified. The other thing I want to get into is uh, remediation. So let's go ahead uh, for the policy that we um, that we just created. Let's go ahead and run an assessment. And then we'll also do an uh, remediation uh, for it. So it's going to take two minutes uh, for it to run uh, a remediation. In the meantime, I'll walk through some of uh, the reporting uh, that happens uh, uh, within this product. So all the report data that comes out um, uh, can be downloaded as JSON. Uh, you can download this and massage the data any way, any way you want. And there is a complete uh, audit trail on who did what and when. For example, in this case, we just ran an assessment. Um, let's see if we have a remediation here. That's a remediation. Okay, so this one has a remediate. Uh, so you can see uh, we ran an assessment as root. Um, and this was the job ID. Uh, you can also dive into the details of the job. You can look at the raw data, um, you know, import this into Splunk or some other application that you want to bring it into and create any fancy reports that you want to create for executive uh, consumption. Let's look at the remediation data as well. Notice when we remediate, uh, we also provide you details on what changed. So when you run an assessment, we tell you these are the changes we'll be making as part of uh, remediation run. And once you remediate, all those changes are available for review as well. The last thing I want to talk about is, um, you know, we designed the solution with role-based access controls in mind. Uh, so you can configure the solution such that the operations teams can do the remediations. Uh, the security teams uh, can do the assessment and you can configure the permissions such that Right, because that was one of the main things that people were asking for is that the security team is able to come in and run assessments and can see what those assessments are, but that they're not necessarily given access to modify systems. Right. And in talking with customers, we had so many different scenarios that they were asking for, whether or not a security professional can run remediations or not, to what extent can they run remediations, and whether or not they're going to allow their IT operations people to define what those security policies are. One of the main things that we've been trying to do with this, with SaltStack for SecOps, is to do, is to express what SecOps really is intended to be. And that is a communication medium inside of a tool between your operations and your security teams. That communication medium also therefore means that we need to be able to have that logical and clean separation of rules. That's precisely right, Tom. And you know, uh, so this is where uh, you know this is there is a reason we call this product SecOps this is because this is a this is finally a solution where both the security and ops teams can collaborate on a single platform to do the assessments for uh, uh, you know configurations, compliance violations, vulnerabilities, and then also remediate them. Uh, uh, 
without having to hand off an Excel sheet. You know, like typically what we have seen is that the security team run their assessments or scans, create an Excel sheet or a, you know, a, you know, which is massive in size, and then hand it off to the ops teams and hey, go fix this. And you know, they have to go through it, cobble through all those instructions, figure out the remediation steps for them. Maybe it's a manual process. Sometimes it's, you know, bash scripts and PowerShell scripts and so on. And with this, you don't have to do that anymore. You know, as long as you configure the solution so that, you know, security teams can do the assessments, they can come in here and run the assessments. And the ops teams then can go ahead and remediate once they have uh, the authorization to remediate, you can easily hook up this solution with something like ServiceNow or any ticket management solution because this is an API-driven solution. Mm -hmm. So you can get all the approvals required before you can make the changes. There is, you know, there is a good change management workflow in place, and once you get the appropriate um, um, uh, approvals, you could come into the solution and and say, you know what, uh, go ahead and remediate. The last thing I wanted to cover in this is, you know. Uh, you know, we spend a lot of time in uh, for this product, not only just building this product, but building out uh, the content for this product. Uh, and you know, we this product is certified by CIS. Uh, and you know, the way we solved this, you know, this was a massive engineering problem to solve, is to figure out a way to ship content without actually having to update. Um, uh, the the underlying software for it, and it's very simple the way it all eventually works out. <clears throat> uh, so there is a feed that Solstack uh, was, feeds into this product, and by default, uh, 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 the product itself reaches out the to Solstack's uh, websites to download this content. Uh, if there is new content available, so our goal here is to push out new content uh, as soon as it's ready. We're building an engineering team to support that effort. So uh, customers should expect uh, routine updates um, for this content. And once this content is available, uh, Solstack SecOps would download that content uh, and um, ingest it so that it's available in the in the in the product. And the way we designed this, we you know we want we were mindful of the fact that you know you know customers will come in and create policies with the checks that were shipped with an older version of the content. So when you create a policy that's always a snapshot of the checks that you created at the time of creation of the policy. The new content doesn't interfere with your existing policies. Um, so you know you you have a repeatable way to prove to the auditors this is something we ran three months ago, and um, you can confirm that you know it's the same it works the same way rather than uh, you know new content would go in and then those compliance become non-compliant or not compliant issues become compliant. So so the uh, you can you know, by default the product will download this every every day uh, but you can also run, come to the screen that you're seeing here and then download content and do an uh, on demand uh, download of that um, of that content so that wraps up the the, the demo for saltstack secops uh, in this presentation uh, tommy anything you want to add um, Nope, I think that this is fantastic. Again, we've worked very hard to to bring this out. And the thing that we're, again, just so excited about is to be able to bring security and operations teams together to solve this very, very real problem that we have to deal with today. And the goal being that we can create more secure infrastructure through automation. Thank you for being on, Mayhul. Thank you for the demo, and thank you very much for uh, everything that you've done for us as a company. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for uh, watching another episode of Salt Air, and hopefully you have an opportunity to come back and try out our enterprise SecOps product for yourself, and then it can help you build a more secure infrastructure. Thank you, and until next thank time. You.